All right, guys. Welcome on into Drinks with Thanks, Work From Home, Wasted From Home. After hours, we wanted to talk with Molly even more. And so we are because we we can do whatever the fuck we want right now in the <laughs> queue, the quarantine world we are in. And one of the stories you brought up was the fact that your your husband, Max, who are you, you are now with all the time because you're not traveling for sideline reporting. Uh, mm-hmm. And the fact that you guys met. Well, you guys knew one another for when you were younger and in college and whatnot. But I, I kind of like was a bit of a Cupid in a way uh, to pat yeah. myself on the back. Yes. Cheers. Cheers to Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> yeah, Matt, I don't. I don't yeah, know. Just wanted to if, tell everyone. I, that. <laughs> I don't know if I would be married to my husband if it weren't for you, Julie. Like maybe we would. We would probably like find our way to each other. That's like such a big grandiose statement, by the way. I know. But um, <laughs> it's wild. Like, you were the first person that made me see him as more than a friend. So I was friends with my now husband, Max, for nearly 10 years before we ever started dating. Um, he was in L.A. for work and texted me last minute and said, hey, I'm in L.A. tonight. Um, we'd love to get together if you're around. And you and I had plans to get dinner. And as I remember, you were getting like a two hour manicure. Yes, I was, which I could very much use right now. (laughs) You were running late to dinner because you were getting like a two-hour million-dollar manicure. Yeah, I was. And and so he texts me and says he's in town. I said, well, I'm getting dinner with my girlfriend, but she's running late. You should just come and join us. Just come crash. So he crashes dinner with us. And it was like a scene from The Bachelor where you and I are sitting on one side and he's sitting across from us. And it was such a fun night. We had such great conversation. And he was like, I remember seeing him thinking like, wow, he's such a catch. He's such a good guy. Julie, (laughs) up with him. And like throughout my friendship with Max, I've like tried to set him up with all of my friends. And they've all been like, maybe, I don't know. And you looked at me and you were like, are you crazy? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I was shocked. I'm free. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Like, set him up with me. Like, no way. You guys, I could have been like 10,000 <laughs> miles away at the dinner. It was like, you were googly eyed for him. He was googly eyed for you. And that's why I was like, wait, set me up with him? Like, no. And I I'm thought so it was fun because you were trying to, like, so you're, you know, you were like, yeah, you guys should hang out this weekend or something. And I remember him at your at your wedding the day after in the pool being like, you know, Julie's great and all, but like, I'm in love. I was in love with Molly at the time too. I'm like, I also helped just like, (laughs) this, you know, a nice little juxtaposition. Like, yes, this is the rest of the world. And this is the girl you obviously love, which was um, great though, that you guys like, it was so perfect. And then as soon as that happened, you guys were like, all right, game on basically. Yeah. Well, you gave me the courage to go to one of my like closer guy friends. And you gave me an out. I was able to text. I texted him because that's the world we live in now. And I said, Julie made a comment about, um, I don't know, like, I tried to set you guys up. And he said that, like, you're in love with me. <laughs> like, is that true? I said, is that true? And he was like, well, I mean, like, I don't know, like, sort of. Like, I think, I think, like, I've always wondered. And I was like, oh, damn. And uh, then we went on a date a month later, and the first night we went on a date, we were like, oh, shit, we're getting married. And that was history, so. Wow, isn't that amazing? Oh, that just gave me shivers, like, okay, this is, wow, that's amazing. Oh, that's so cute. I oh man, I remember saying no. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, ah, no, he's mine. <laughs> I see the way he looks at Molly, like, no, I want him. <laughs> that's amazing. That is, that is such a great story. And you guys are so cute together. And you had one of the most fun weddings I've ever been to, if I may say so. Um, mm-hmm. It was, it was, we, we, I played 12, 18 holes of golf and got destroyed before then just getting more and more destroyed. But you have a great family and friends. That was a lot of fun. And to pivot completely the other way uh, with, you were just doing the XFL which is great for sideline reporters. It's like you actually really get to 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 showcase like all your skills because you don't always get to do that. Um, what is one thing that you, like what was, I guess what's one thing that stood out about it that you think from a sideline reporter 
standpoint you would want in the NFL and maybe what's one thing that like you don't think would transfer over well? Um, I, so it's interesting. I came on to the XFL sidelines a week late. Um, I watched week one as a fan. I became a part of the broadcast in week two because they needed me to fill in for uh, an open position after week one. And Week one as a fan, I was watching it and I was like, oh my God, why am I not a part of this? This is electric. Like these interviews are so raw and real. This is so much fun. The access is unprecedented. It is a sideline reporter's dream. It really is. Mm -hmm. And it is, um, if the, if it, not if, when the XFL continues to catch on next season, I think it could revolutionize sideline reporting because it makes the sideline reporter a bigger voice in the broadcast and it is an essential role that makes the XFL unique. So that part I would love to bring over to college football and the NFL to have the sideline reporter be a more vital voice in the right, broadcast yeah. where it's getting information that other people can't get. So in the XFL, you're interviewing people right after a touchdown and you're getting that breathless, raw emotion I don't know if the NFL and college football are going to allow something like that, but just to be able to um, report on the things that you overhear, I, I think just using sideline reporters more can be really valuable. Yeah. I think in, in the NFL and in college football, you can find your spots to maybe interview a coordinator, a coach, something like that, or even like the quarterback when the defense is on the field, the quarterback, once he talks to his coordinator is, sitting there like if if time allows for it you can ask a quick question and then get out of their way right i yeah. think i i think the nfl could stand to have a little more access but college football i know that um that's overlorded by the coach the head coach of the program and they could say no to anything that's why college football is so hard to cover but i think it's something that could push college football to push the boundaries to give a little bit more access in game to make things exciting, not only, but to also um, give a, a voice to the athletes and let them kind of have a moment to shine. So yeah. I think there are certain things that we could bring into other um, other leagues that I think could really work. The kickoff, the new kickoff with the XFL is something that could be brought in. Um, it's, a, it's a new kickoff that helps guard against injuries. The players aren't going up hundred miles an hour at each other. Instead, they're not able to start running until the ball is caught. Right. Like, yeah. That That's good. Easily be added into the NFL and college football. Mm -hmm. So it was so fun to be a part of it. And Honestly, as a sideline reporter, I've never felt more important. So it was really cool. Oh, that's so great. I know because it's, mm -hmm. as, as obviously you know so well, and, and my past experiences of just being like my last year I did sideline reporting, I was just like really frustrated by the end. I'm like, I just never got on in any broadcast. And, like I know it depends on the producers and, and it varied like from Fox to ESPN and, and beyond. And so I was like, oh, I just felt like, I felt like shit after like probably 90% of my broadcast. Cause I was like, I just don't do like, I cannot get on and soccer is different. Mm -hmm. Cause it was just like not a lot of stoppage in play. But then I started doing like, Oh, I'll just like do these reports afterward and like film them. And then I'm like, it's so hard for all these sideline reporters. Like you guys work so hard to get, like you would do like 10 interviews for 10 minutes each and use and get even like you whittle it down to one thing per player and then you get like one of those things on air and it's like, Oh my God. It's yeah. like mind numbing. So you get like two of all your prep and the interviews you do during the week. Cause I do tons of interviews during the week. You get maybe 5% of that in not, yeah. not even. And my thing this, this year, especially I changed my mindset. I said, I'm only going to do reports on stuff that there is no way my play-by-play -play or my analyst can give. If it's something that they know about or a story that they know about, I'm not even going to touch it. I'm not going to talk yeah. about it. I'm going to give what the quarterback is saying to his offensive line right after he was sacked because right. no one else is right there and no one else has that access. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of stuff that makes it hard for a producer to say no to you because that's, that's access and things that no one else is hearing. Yeah. So, changed my perspective in a sense this past season I so I, I used to go into games with like a ton of notes and I was ready to go and I had all my stories lined up I go into games with literally nothing now 
and I know better at my job. And it's something that one of my producers, Josh Hoffman, um, really pushed me to do. He said, if you have any stories that you could tell me on Friday, or if you have anything that um, is even a little bit prefabricated, I don't want it. And I'm not going to go to you anymore. And so I said, okay, I am going to challenge myself. So I'd go into games with literally nothing. And the stuff that I would get because I was listening, I was so hungry to get in the game because I had nothing. The stuff I got was gold. Like I, I think my favorite, one of my favorite reports from this season was um, during the Washington, Washington State, Oregon game. The quarterback, Anthony Gordon is yelling at his team. They just converted a two point conversion. They're getting close. It's a, I think it's a one score game and he's running up and down the sidelines saying, we're going to effing win this game. We're going to effing win this game. And he's running back and forth. He's so excited. He stops. He pukes everywhere. Oh my God. And then he gets back up and he continues to scream. Like he didn't even register that he puked. <laughs> he literally just vomited and kept screaming. And I said, oh my God, this is gold. This is so good for television. And I'm going to report this. And it was one of those moments that I look back on and I'm like so proud because I was in the right place at the right time. And I was paying attention because I just yes. had to. So. That is incredible. Cool. Like watching that as a sideline reporter, be like, oh my gosh come to mama like this is exactly what I'm gonna see oh, and you're you're you more perceptive as you said when you're like okay I gotta get in I gotta get in the game boom 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 what's going on here what's going on here that's great that's great advice it's so exciting it's like you're getting ready you're going in for battle not really obviously but you're going into the game um getting me pumped up not like I get I get pumped up in a different way these days to do something a little bit different but that's what we're all doing something a little bit different now and guys make sure you can listen to the full podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts on Saturday morning with Molly McGrath on Drinks with Thanks as well. FuboSportsNetwork.com, Drinks with Thanks. And we'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much, Molly. Cheers. Bottom Thank up. you.